Good evening, students. Uh, today we are going to discuss on the anatomic physiology of the urinary system. Isn't it? There's a funny image what it shows you today. It's, uh, the picture it reminds us like how we're going to urinate. So the topic we are going to discuss, the contain those are the four contains in that. The first contain what we are going to discuss is regarding the general introduction, anatomy of urinary system, urine formation, and urine storage and elimination. Coming towards the introduction, so. The first successful human organ transplant was the kidney, which was performed in the year of 1953. Isn't it so amazing that the first kidney transplant was done in the year of 1953? So the many instruments or many things have been done since then, and thousands of transplantation was been done because one kidney, on the one kidney, a human can be adapt uh, for the many days or many years. So as we can, for this, uh, we can transfer and perform in the urinary system consists of two kidneys, two ureters, sorry, two ureters, and, I'm sorry, oh, this, but, two kidneys, two ureters, the urinary bladder, and the ureter. Isn't it? The two kidneys we have, that means, in some textbooks it will be written one pair, so make conscious of it. Like, we are talking about two kidneys, so in some of the textbooks it will be written one pair. Okay, or two ureters and the urinary bladder and the urethra. Now this is an image what we know since the day what we are concerned. The kidney, the ureter, the bladder and the, the urethra. So how many kidneys we have? Two. That is one pair of kidney. We have two ureters. Yes. So you can see that attached to the bladder. How many bladders we have? Two. No, we have one bladder, okay, and one urethra. Next. So anatomy of the kidney. Now everybody knows the kidney is shape of what? Yes, it is in a bean shape. Let's see what the anatomy of the kidney is. The kidneys are located in the upper abdominal cavity on the either side of the vertebral column behind the peritoneum. That is retroperitoneum. So in the image, what you can see is the this the cavity that this is the part of the anterior, this is the part of the posterior. This is a CT scan we can see over here. We can see in the peritoneal. I'm sorry, once again. Okay. So renal vein, renal artery, and here you can see these are the two kidneys which is situated at the retroperitoneal region. The upper portion of the kidney which rests on a lower surface of the diaphragm and are enclosed and protected by the ribcage. So whole area where you can see this is protected by the ribcage. So kidney is a bean shape. So kidney is in a bean shape. So it is a bean shaped organ and it is 11 centimeter long. It is 6 centimeter wide. 3 cm thickness and it weights is 150 grams. And it's not a kilogram. Make, do not make any mistakes in the examination. So sometimes a student writes the it weights, it's not weight, it's a weight 150 grams. Okay? So remember these it may can be asked in the time of the practicals also how much it is weight. It is formally it has been asked during the the Bible. They are embedded in the health in the position by a mass of fats. So everywhere if you try to touch it is a mass of fat. So width is three centimeter, width is six centimeter, whereas thickness is a three centimeter. So you can understand it is whole consisting of a mass. Okay. A sheath of the fiber elastic because it's consists of renal fascia which encloses the kidney in the renal fat. Now coming going forward. That is, what are the functions of the kidney? What is the fun first function of the kidneys? Everybody knows. It removes the toxic material from our body. It removes what? It removes the toxic material from our body. But what it says, it filters the blood plasma, separates the waste, returns useful materials to the blood, and eliminates the waste. Not everything has been removed, but some of the materials that should be used for your blood. Toxic is the nitrogenous waste, which is, you feel a smell like ammonia into your body. When you urinate, it feels uh, some burning sensation. 
okay? Or sometimes you drink a less water into your body. So what happens? You feel a burning sensation. Or if it is increased, so what do you feel like? A, the smell will be like a ammonia. Okay? Ammonia, urea, uric acid, creatinine, and the creatinine which has been removed from your body. Causes are the idea of vomiting and the cardiac arrest, ERs, convergence, coma, and the death. This is, these are the one of the applied anatomy that you can see in the kidney. If it is kidney gets dysfunction, so there is a cause of the diarrhea. If some ammonia is going to increase, so there is a vomiting. If urea, uric acid is increased, so there is a chance of getting cardiac arrhythmias and convergence, where you can see there is ammonia and creatinine is going to increase. So the formally even everything is dysfunction of the dysfunction what we can see of the kidney, it may have chances of the causing of a death. Next. Function of the kidney, what we have seen the first one, the second it says regulate the blood volume and osmolarity. So we have seen in the uh, cardiac classes regarding cardiovascular system, we have seen the blood circulation system. In this system, blood circulation where the blood circulates and takes the oxygenated and deoxygenated, but doesn't say it filters the blood. Does it say it filters the blood? No, it doesn't say it fil doesn't filter the blood. It takes the oxygenated blood, sorry, it gives the carbon dioxide and takes the oxygenated blood. That what we are learning in the blood circulation. But whereas we are talking about it regulates the blood volume and the osmolarity. Okay. Next, the function of the kidney which produces the hormones, which produces the first is adrenaline, erythropoietin, and calcitonin. So 125 dicalciferol, which has been causing for the improvement of the calcitonin. Okay, so erythropoietin is what? Anyone can answer with this? Okay, fine. You find the these word as per as terminology regarding the erythropoietin. Find it out and you have to show me tomorrow. Next is renin. Renin is a hormonal which is used for increase. Yes, one of the factors which is increased in the angiotensin 1 and this angiotensin 1 which has been increased in the angiotensin 2 and they synthesizes which is causing for the hypertension. Uh, we are going to deal at the last point regarding applied anatomy. Next is regular, it regulates the acid base balance of the body fluids. Detoxify the superoxidized oxides, free radicals and the drugs. So whatever the medicines you are taking, any of the drugs, when you fall sick and you take the drugs during that time, so these drugs has to get filtered and once these are filtered, these has to be get removed from your body. That is, it should be detoxified and superoxidized with free radicals and drugs. So kidney is along the posterior, the abdominal wall. So the first class, so first one, the first um, slide what we have seen is the it is at the retroperoneal region, that is behind, that is we, we are talking about the posterior side. Okay, this is one of the, okay, so it's clear to you. Next, the medial surface of the kidney is concave with the helium. Now you can see this part, the inside part, which is to be known as the helium, this side, only this side, it is a helium. So helium carrying the renal nerves and the blood vessels, where you can see these. So it's carrying the renal nerves and the blood vessels. So renal parenchyma is divided into the outer cortex and the inner medulla. So you can find the outer cortex and the inner medulla which is present. We are going to come on to that. So extension of the cortex, how it is? So renal columns. So we can see the renal, you can see on the diagram the renal papillae, renal pyramids and renal columns. Where it has been everything which has been supplied and gives to the ureter. So once everything has been filtered, so once it has been filtered, it goes into the ureter. So what is the project? It projects towards the sinus. Now, this is a sinus. Sorry. Excuse me. The part which has been empty, you can see it is a renal sinus. Okay, it is a renal consisting of a renal site. And this intensity which has been attached to your heliums. So these are capillaries which has been attached to your pyramids. 
Can you see this? This was an empty. Okay, so a helium. Okay, this is helium, renal, sinus, and this empty it gets filled with your glands, and this is connected with the renal. You can see the renal columns, renal glands. So these renal pyramids are divided the medulla the, into six to ten renal pyramids. If you want to count, you can count this one, two, three, four, five, six. So six is usual number, but it can be eight or maybe ten, not more than ten. Okay. Each pyramid is a follicle with a blunt point called the papilla. Now this is the blunt point, which is to be known as the papilla. Okay. Now which is facing towards the sinus. Now when you are drawing the diagram, if you are drawing the diagram, please make sure that this end part, which is showing you, which is the towards the downward direction, that is the sinus. Organs associated with the kidneys. Which are the organs associated with the kidneys? Now let's see. As the kidney lie on the either side of the vertebral column, each is associated with a different group of structures. Now, first right kidney superiorly. Now, we are talking about the first right kidney. So, how many kidney we have? One pair or two pairs? Okay, it is one pair. The right adrenal gland is anteriorly situated. So, we can see the diagram. And you can see it's above there is a right kidney. Right adrenal gland at the anterior, anterior is up, above. Okay. The right lobe, that is front, sorry, my mistake, that is in front. The right lobe of the liver, the duodenum, and the hepatic flexure of the colon is at the posterior, that is in, in front, behind it. The diaphragm and the muscles of the posterior is attached with the abdominal wall. You can see on the diagram, that is the first shows the adrenal glands. Second, it shows the liver, which is well covered. Duodenum and descending part, that is the third. So the fourth one, that is, shows a colon hepatic flexion. And the fifth, which shows a jejunum, which is towards the right. Now, if you are standing in such a manner, so this is my right and this is left. So left, what it comes to the left. So left kidney is superior to what you can see. The left adrenal gland, anterior, so we have two. The spleen, stomach, pancreas, jejunum, and splenic flexure of the colon is at the posterior end. The diaphragm and the muscles of the posterior are the abdominal wall. So we can see in the figure. So we can draw this diagram. That's uh, the end of the class, and so, so we can draw the diagram regarding the relations of the kidney. So we have seen regarding the kidney, introduction of the introduction of the kidney, regarding kidney, parts of the kidney, how and how much it does it weight, length, uh, relationship of the kidney. So the relationship of the kidney, these molecules in the blood that will be transformed to become a part of the urinal tract. Through the above structures, while the molecules that will be retained and reabsorbed back into the blood will come out of the Bowman's capsule and go into this is uh, regarding where we are talking about. This which comes out of the papillae, which is regarding the nephrons we are talking about. Okay, the slide must have, yes. So how many nephrons? The nephron consist, contains 1.2 million nephrons are being consistent. How many? 1.2 million. So which are the functional unit of the kidney? So we are talking about 1.2 million, so many functions are been going on. These are the units which have been working together at one time. Only not only kidneys will function, it is consisting in the inner inner cortex which is forms in the medulla, so we can see this 1.2 million of the nephrons are working together. So nephron, what does it consist of? It consists of afferent arterial, glomerulus, and efferent arterial. Renal tubules, these are proximal convoluted tubules, loop of Henle and distal convoluted tubule. Okay, these are the tubules now, we are talking about the tubules, the structure of a nephron. 
Okay, so structure of the nephron, which is we know is regarding glomerulus, that is the Bowman's capsule. Bowman's capsule, which is consisting of the glomerulus filtration. And once these ends, so we have proximal convoluted tubule, loop of MLA, and the distal convoluted tubule, which is connected to the conducting tubule. Let's go towards the microscopic anatomy. What is this? So each kidney consists of about 1 million basic functional units of the cord, which is called as a nephrons, that is 1.2, where the blood filtering and the urine formation occurs. Each nephron is completed by the 10 paths, such as after artery hole, which is attached to the glomerulus. Through the glomerulus, it goes to the Bowman's capsule. From the Bowman's capsule to the efferent artery hole, and from the efferent artery hole to the proximal convoluted tubule, through proximal convoluted tubule, which is also to be known as PCT, okay, capital PCT. Next, it leads to the descending limb of the loop of Henle, and we can see after the loop of Henle, ascending loop of Henle, then distal convoluted tubule, and through the distal convoluted tubule, once it goes, so it is collecting duct, which is not part of the nephron. Collecting duct, which is not part of the nephron, because nephron consisting to the distal convoluted tubule. It is just attached, that is one of the pipeline, what we can see as which is attached to the collecting duct. Okay, which is not part of the nephron. Please do not mention it into your notes. Okay. Now this is where we are looking at. Okay, now we have started with the C if uh after sorry, if it artery hole and the after artery, where the blood supplies and the different artery hole, you can see. So this is the globular filtration where it's, it's inside in the Bowman's capsule. So the Bowman's capsule, what we can see, there is a proximal coronary tubule through the proximal coronary tubule, loop of Henle descending, and then the ascending, then the aphid artery hole, and what we can see is a distal coronary tubule, which has been attached to the collecting duct. Okay. Nephrons. So we are talking about the nephrons. So most components of the nephrons are within the cortex. So I was talking about the half cortex, so inner cortex and outer cortex. Outer cortex, which is the one of the covering of the kidney. Inner cortex consisting of the components of the nephrons are within the cortex. Are you understanding everyone? Yes? Okay. Very good. So if you see, the nephrons are connected to the renal arteries and the veins. Yes, we have different arterial and afferent artery. So when we are talking about when it has been corrected, so the pathway of the blood flow that we can see through the kidney is an essential part of the process of the urine formation. Blood from the abdominal aorta. Remember this. Blood from the abdominal aorta enters the renal artery, which branches the extensively within the kidneys into the smaller arteries. Okay, so we are, we are talking about these apparent arteries and the different arteries when it has been connected. Now you can see these how the pathway goes. So you can see the loop of nephrons, there is a particular papillary network is present. So blood from the abdominal aorta enters the renal artery, which is the Next, the smallest artery gives rise to the apparent arterioles. This gives a rise to the apparent arterioles in the renal cortex. We are talking about inside. From the apparent arterioles, that is from the apparent arterioles inside the renal cortex, which is, you can see, in after arterioles, blood flows into the glomeruli. Okay. These glomeruli are consisting in a capillary forms. These are consisting in the capillary form to the efferent artery holes, then, which is the context, to go to the peritubular capillaries. So we can see there is a consisting of a peritubular capillary. You see this? Peritubular capillaries. These are all connected together. So you can see there is a peritubular capillaries. So two veins, now we can see this is the attachment okay, to the veins. To the vein, renal vein, and finally to the inferior vena cava. So, 
Next, regarding the nephrons, what are you talking about? Now we have seen regarding the kidneys, now we are going to see regarding the nephrons, and we are looking at the nephrons. How many are present? 1.2 million. Okay, these are the functional units which have been working together. Now, how this, these are the parts what we are talking about. Now we are talking about the first, that is the Bowman's capsule. Now it is also to be known as a glomerulus capsule. That is to be known as that is a Bowman's capsule. It's a cup-like sac and it is the first portion of the nephron. When the blood reaches the kidneys, when the blood reaches towards the kidneys, the filtration it enters into the Bowman's capsule. The blood into the two components, that is the afferent and apparent, which is filtered blood product and filtrate that move through the nephrons. And we can see there is a blood afferent and apparent which has been moved inside. And once it has been moved, it is goes through the PCP. The filtered blood product and the filtrate that is moved through the nephron, another structure in the Glomerulus is enclosed in the two layers, that is the glomerular Bowman's capsule. Now we can see this is a capsule which is present and these are the capillary systems we can talk about. Okay, so this is the proximal glomerular tubule which is next, which is attached to the cup-like structure of the Bowman's capsule. Let's see. Proximal cosmolytic tubule. From Bowman's capsule, the filtrate drains into the proximal convoluted tubule. The surface of the epithelial cells of this segment of the nephron is covered with the densely packed microglides. The microglides increases the surface area of the cells, thus facilitating their functions. Sorry, facilitating their restorative functions. So once it has been filtered from the glomerular filtration, so on here it is passing towards the proximal convoluted tubule. What we can see is that these consisting of the microvilli's has been passing and these are getting activated. So these ones, these are getting activated, that is, which is a restorative at that phase. So they starting getting moving forward. Loop of Henle, as soon as we complete with the PCT, from the PCT it's closed and which goes with the loop of Henle. We are talking about anatomy, we are not talking about any other filtration right now. Okay, we are not talking about any filtration, reabsorption or secretion. We are just talking about at the present the anatomical part. Loop of Henle, that is the proximal convoluted tubule, then bends into the loop, which is called as a loop of Henle. Now we can see this loop. So this is called as a loop of Henle, ascending and descending loop of Henle. The loop that of the Henle part of the tubule that leaps or loops from the vertex into the medulla descending level. Okay, so it is when they're descending, descending level is going towards the top. Okay. So it is descending level, then returns to the vortex that is the ascending level. So you can see this part, okay, which is descends into the vortex. Okay. Descends from the vortex into the medulla. Descend from the vortex into the medulla and it is ascending again towards the medulla from the vortex. Get through the medulla through the cortex, okay, that is a ascending limb. Okay, so this is a descending loop of Henle and ascending loop of Henle. The loop of Henle is divided into the descending and ascending loops. The, the ascending loop of the Henle is a much thicker than the descending portion. Okay, remember this. Next, which has been connected to the distal convoluted tubule, that is the last part of the the thick ascending portion of the loop of Henle leads into the PCT, that is a distal convoluted tubule. The distal convoluted tubule is lined with the simple cubital cells. These are lined with the simple cubital cells. What we have seen, these are consisting with the microvilli's. We see these are consisting with the Microvilli's, which are been fascinating. And when you see regarding distal convoluted tubule, these are 
thicker. There are we have not mentioned that is PCPs are thicker than the DCP. No, DCPs are thicker than the PCP. You can see larger than the proximal convoluted tubules in human because the proximal convoluted tubule has a brush border, but it doesn't have. The DCT is lined with the simple cubital cells, the lumen of the DCT, are larger than the proximal ones, convoluted tubules, lumen, uh, sorry, proximal convoluted lumen, because the proximal convoluted tubule has a border of the microvilli. So the same difference is what I was talking about with you all. There is a microvilli which is present, which is the simplest one of the cubital cells, and here which is brush-like structure of the microvilli. Last which is not part of the nephron, which is collecting. Collecting ducts. The DCT then drains into the collecting ducts. DCT, distal convoluted tubule. Are you understanding everyone? Okay. Several collecting ducts converge and drain. So we have seen the helium and the renal sinus, which has been present, which has been present, and which has been connected to the papillae. So these cortex, these are in calcis, what we can see as. So these are the calyx are being present. So minor calyx and major calyx. So minor calyx, so these are being connected to the papillae. Okay, the end part of the pyramid, which we have seen in the last, uh, the before the slides, the diagram, there is an end part which has been connected to the minor calyx. And through the minor calyx, when it is goes down, descend downwards, so it becomes a major calyx and these major calyx which has been converted into a ureter. From here, the filtrate now called as a urine. Once it is goes into these three, four portions, that is from the glomerulus, from efferent and afferent, through the glomerulus, filtration, then this filtration which goes through the PCT, that is the proximal convoluted tubule, from the loop of Henle, that is Descending loop of Henle that is from the cortex to medulla and from the medulla to the cortex that is called as the ascending. From the ascending which is seen to the DCT and which is connected to the tubules. And last part which has been medulla or uh, medulla ends which is a papillae. Okay, uh, sorry. Yes. And which is connected to those minor calyx and these minor calyx which has been converted into a major calyx this collection which is converted to a ureter. Now here from the filtrate now which is called as a urine drains into the renal pelvis and the final stage where the sodium and water are been repeatedly absorbed. Okay. Any doubts? I hope you have understood, understood regarding these parts of the nephron. Moving forward. Let's see regarding the urine formation. Now we have seen the parts, what they do, and let's see what is mean by the urine formation. The kidney prostrates in a four units. Four steps. Four steps. Glomerular filtration. Filtration is the first step. Second step, reabsorption in the tubular. Third step, tubular secretion. Fourth step. Concentration. Now looking towards the diagram, so you can see the blood plasma which enters with all the toxicity. Okay, you can see in the renal corpuscle which is present, renal tubules and periticular capillaries. So we have seen periticular capillaries, these are the these are the arteries, which these are capillaries which has been to all towards the nephron. Okay. So glomerular filtration that is a creates a plasma-like filtrate of the blood. There are stimular reabsorption, removes the useful solutes from the filtrate and returns them to the blood. Stimular secretion removes the additional waste from the blood and adds them to the filtrate and concentration removes the water from the urine and concentrates the waste. Okay, so these are the four steps that we can identify. Any doubts? Because this is going to, we have to understand what is actually happening over here. 
Global filtration we are seeing is just filtration of the proximal thermal tubule where it's consisting of the micro villi's and these micro villi's are seen in brush etc. But the filtration is occurring over in glomerulation. Okay, this glomerulus which is consisting of a renal corpus. So the cup-like structure that is a Bowman capsule. Okay, this consisting of efferent and afferent article from the afferent which goes to the efferent. So it has to form the glomerulus. Then to the efferent, it has to get filtered. The tubular reabsorption. So tubular when you're talking about proximal coronary tubule, loop of Henle and DCT, that is a distal coronary tubule. But when you're talking about the first, there is a concentration, that is a proximal coronary tubule, tubular secretion, which is when consisting of the loop of Henle and DCT, whereas you can see the concentration of the water which is being released at the end and the urine is then off. So glomerular filtration and tubular film is the during what you can construct. Here we are going to learn regarding the glomerular filtration. Here we are going to learn regarding the glomerular filtration. So these are pressure. So blood pressure of the afferent and the efferent which has been released. Okay. So the consisting of the over pressure that is the 32 Whereas we can see the 60, that is pressure which has been increased. And once the pressure is out, here we can see there is a 10 out of which has been released. Okay. We'll first understand how the filtration works, and then we can we will understand regarding how this pressure has been maintained. Now coming towards the filtration membrane. Now these are the membranes which have been present. Now because we are talking of the afferent and efferent, which has been consisting of the foot process. The sensory epithelium, that is this one, the sensory epithelium, and you can see the basement membrane, which is the so this is the food process. Okay, you can see the sensory, so this is the sensory one, and the basement membrane, which is in pink in color. Are you understanding? Okay. Okay. So these capsular spaces uh, that the fluid passes through these three barriers. Okay, it has to pass with the these three barriers. In the filtration membrane, we can see there is a any molecule that is smaller than three mm. Okay, can pass freely through the filtration membrane. And if it is in larger size, it cannot pass so into the capsular spaces. What does it include in that? These molecules, what does it include? So water, electrolyte, glucose, ammonia acids, lipids, vitamins, and nitrogenous bases. Yeah. So kidney infections and trauma commonly damage the filtrate membrane and allow the plasma, proteins, and the blood cells to pass Next, regarding the blood cells. Now these blood cells, if you see, there is a thoracic 12 which is present, and we have to see regarding plasma proteins. Now blood cells and plasma proteins, so we are talking about in glomerular filtration, let's see. Now, glomerular filtrate, which is consisting of the filtration, okay, which is a plasma protein. So what does it say? So this glomerular filtration follows the same principles that is it governs the filtration in the capillaries. Now this we are talking about. So capillary blood pressure that is BP, coli osmotic pressure. So what is mean by osmosis? That is higher concentration to the lower concentration. It has to pass through the sum of the membranes. These membranes, what we have seen prior. So these are the membranes, what we have seen, that is a foot process. And these process, it should be non-molecular, that is of 3 nm. And if it is passed, if it is increased in more than larger size, so it will be not being passed. Next, looking towards the pressure, looking towards the pressure that 
BP, COP, and CP. What is meant by? So BP is nothing but a capillary blood pressure which is inside the donor vessel. Coli osmotic pressure when it occurs during time of the filtration. CP that is a capsular pressure. Then what you can see is here that is a BP that is a capillary blood pressure is 60 mm of Hg out. And whereas we can see that is coli osmotic pressure that is a 32 mm of Hg inside. So giving out and getting inside. So these pressures has to be maintained. That is what we are talking about the osmotic pressure. So how much difference is there? There is an 80 that is capsular pressure. That is the pressure is 18 mm of Hg. So net filtration pressure is 10 mm of Hg is out. So when it has been filtered, so it is normally it is 60 mm of Hg. Where these are normal pressures, please make a note onto it. So capillary blood pressure is 60 mm of Hg, that is out, and there is colloid osmotic pressure is 32 mm of Hg in, and capsular pressure is 18 mm of Hg, which has been going out with that. Okay, so afferent and efferent. So which is consisting in the globulus in these capillaries which shows the out is how much we are getting the filtration is of 10 mm of Hg is out so the filtration but we can see for us. So GFR glomerulus filtration rate how much is the filtration rate so what is the filtration rate is normal is 125 ml per minute. So 125 ml is every minute has been getting filtered. Where the average of adult male we are talking about. So this amount of rate is 180 liter per day. So that much functioning it has been going on and even now presently. If you are talking about 24 hours, so 180 ml per day that amount of the rate has been filtered. So what we are talking about every minute is 125 ml per minute. So the question comes in MCQs that is how much amount of the GFR is per day, that is 180 liter per day. An average of 99% that is filtered is absorbed, reabsorbed, so that only 1 to 2 liter of urine per day excreted. How much? Normal is 1 to 2 liter. How much is getting filtered? 180 liter per day in that what we how much amount has been urine has been out? That is 1 to 2 liter. 1 to 2 liter per day it has been excreted. Going towards the next. GFR must be precisely controlled. How? It is too high and increase in the urine output. So as we have seen, the output has been increased. Okay, there are 60 mm of Hg. That is the out when it has been increased, the filtration. So threat of dehydration and electrolyte depletion will be there. So whereas net filtration out was 10, so here will be the net filtration will be 20, net filtration will be 30, if it has been uncontrolled or urine output will be higher in pressure. In GFR, it is too low, it is insufficient ex excretion of this. Means if it is below 60 mm of Hg, so it will be, output will be the 5. Or 1 to 2 liter may not be there, it will be only 1 liter. If it is decreased more or we can see the pressure has been decreased more, so there is an output also will be decreased. The only way to adjust is GFR from moment to moment to change the glomerular blood pressure. So as the pressure is changes, so every pressure that is from 60 mm of Hg to, we can see the colloid pressure, which has been 80 mm of, 18 mm of Hg, it will be, this pressure will be, net filtration pressure will be 80, 10. 
Okay, so this is the filtration what we are talking about regarding only the globin cells. Okay. Regarding renal autoregulation, we will see at the next class. Thank you. Hello.